Good morning, everyone. I am Janice Mathis, Executive Director of the National Council of Negro Women. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes as we allow our additional guests to join the webcast this morning. We're webcasting live from NCNW's headquarters building at 633 Pennsylvania Avenue, the Dorothy Irene Height building. If you've not seen it, the next time you're in Washington, stop by. It's a real treat and a real gem to see. I believe that we are live. You should be able to hear me now. I'm Janice Masters again. I want to welcome you to Millennial Entrepreneurs. At this point, we will have just a few brief instructions, but I want to tell you just a little bit about NCNW. NCNW was founded in 1935 to combat lynching, which was a terrible problem at that time. It was founded by Dr. Mary McLeod Bassoon. And later on next year, you will find out that Dr. Bethune will be added to the luminaries in Statuary Hall at the United States Capitol. She was the founder of Bethune Cookman University as well as NCNW. She worked for a long time with the SALA, and she was one of the founders of the United Negro College Fund, a prolific educator, stateswoman, friend to president. She is part of our DNA and someone that we're so proud of. On November the 9th through the 11th, we will convene our 58th National Convention in Washington, D.C. at the Grand Hyatt. We encourage you to consider attending. Part of that is directly related to millennial entrepreneurs. Some of you have been with us all year throughout the series, and if you have attended at least four of the webcasts, you're eligible to participate in something called pitch competition. We've got $5,000 in prize money, but more importantly, we'll give you an opportunity to talk about your business idea and convince others, like Shark Tank, if you've ever watched it on television, that it's worth an investment. So we're very pleased with what we're doing on behalf of Ingrid Saunders-Jones, our national chair, and Paulette Norvell Lewis, our program chair. It gives me great pleasure to welcome you to Millennial Entrepreneurs. And now I want to introduce Cheryl McDonald from Wells Fargo, one of the sponsors of today's program. Cheryl has been with the bank 19 years, and she is currently serving as the marketing program manager for multicultural marketing. She's been a good friend to UN, to the United ne not Negro College, but excuse me, to the National Council of Negro Women. And we're delighted to have Cheryl McDonald as our moderator today. Cheryl? Thank you, Janice, and good morning. It is my pleasure to participate in the webinar this morning and to introduce you to our dynamic presenter known as Chief Bosspreneur. Becky A. Davis is also known as the entrepreneur's secret weapon for her straightforward coaching skills that develop individuals into well-rounded business owners. Becky works as a business growth architect and designs business growth blueprints to help clients accelerate growth and build legacy businesses. Becky is CEO of MVP Work LLC, a coaching and consulting firm, and she is the founder of the Bosspreneur Business Circle, a global online and in-person networking platform dedicated to the advancement of women-owned businesses and determined to be the global leader in women business to women business partnerships and transactions. She is a member of the prestigious Forbes Magazine Coaches Council, official entrepreneur coach for the ultra-exclusive Odyssey Media Retreat, executive coach for Black Enterprise Women of Power Summit, and national entrepreneur spokesperson for the Coca-Cola Company's Women's Small Business Initiative. Becky has been featured on Fox, uh, Black Enterprise, Essence, ABC, Forbes, and Huffington Post regarding her work and mission to help women business owners. Becky is one of the most in-demand speakers and experts for small businesses, leadership development, and women empowerment. She has written seven books and is a best-selling author. Becky lives in Atlanta, Georgia. Welcome, Becky. We look forward to your presentation. 
So thank you, Cheryl. Thank you so much for uh, that uh, amazing introduction. I'm always in awe when I hear that uh, that bio read. But uh, I'm excited to be uh, sharing today with the millennial entrepreneurs on really uh, doing it for the gram. I had to think about that. I was like, okay, doing it for the gram. What am I doing for the gram? And, and my daughter told me what doing it for the gram was. So definitely millennial. And um, so we're going to talk about uh, build it. They will come, right? Well, you know, that term, that, that terminology really started um, from Kevin Costner's movie, um, A Field of Dreams, uh, build it and they will come. And too often, as small business owners, we start out and we think, oh, if I have this great idea and I share this amazing idea, then some amazing things are going to happen. People are going to love my product or my service. And sometimes maybe not so much. Um, and so one of the things, um, so the question is, if you build it, will they come? right or wrong and um so i really want to do a, a poll right here uh if you if you actually believe that so william if you can put up the poll um do you believe that if you build it they will come and he's going to put that up and then you'll be allowed to answer and uh, and we'll see where everybody stands so far You can just select the um, uh, your answer and hit submit, and we'll get your poll results. Will you? Okay. Uh, we gotcha. Yes, I'm sorry. Uh, we we uh, can close the poll. We've got very good participation. Uh, and I'll share the results. Uh, Becky, I'm not sure if you can see the results of the poll on okay, your screen. Mm -hmm. You can? Yeah. Yes, I can. So we have 41% right. says, yes, I do believe it. And 59% says, no, I don't believe it. So that's good. Almost a, a mix, 60, 60, 40 mix. And we're going to talk about um, if you build it, they will come. Some things that you really need to do for them to actually be able to um, to come. So thanks. Um, uh, thanks, William, for, for sharing that poll. So let me just uh, share with you kind of my story. Here, here's the thing. If you build it, market it and sell it really well, then they will come because you can build it and be the best kept secret in the world. When I started my company six years ago, uh, I was I was truly elated and excited about um, this, this new venture. So on August 1st, 2012 was the first day that I was working for myself. And I was excited about it. So from August 1st to December the 31st, I really focused on my, my strategy. What was I going to be offering the world and really putting it together to be able to launch January 1st of 2013. And uh, after I did all of that work and, you know, I wrote a couple of books and put my, my um, training uh, materials together, I was, I was elated, excited about um, what was getting ready to happen. And January 1st, when I said, okay, I'm launching this, I had launched it, the, the website went live and I posted it in my social media page. And from there, all I heard was crickets, nothing. And I was like, nobody's asking me about, you know, my business, nobody's asking me. Um, so then I was like, okay, so now, now what do I do? I built it, I, I built it, but the problem and the issue was my marketing before I even really learned to, to sell it. That's where the issue really began. I did not know how to market. I didn't know what marketing consisted of. Now I understood marketing coming out of corporate America, working with um, my marketing teams and, and strategizing, but someone else was responsible for that. It was just, you know, me being able to give input, feedback, ideas, and, and they put the strategies together and they launched. And the, then everybody in the, uh, the, the, 
everybody got the the information whether it was commercials whether it was uh direct mail um sent out but that wasn't my responsibility well that was my first aha that um i'm responsible for that i don't have a marketing team i am the marketing team and so it was a big aha to me and so there were some things that i had to learn on this journey of entrepreneurship um if you build it and no one knows about it you're the best kept secret it doesn't matter how great your product is it doesn't matter how amazing you're transforming you can transform people's lives if no one knows about it then they don't know how to, to find you they don't know how to get to your services and so what i want to share with you um today is um really to be able to um take your marketing to if you if you're going to build it then you need some marketing strategies to really help you in the process and so we're going to talk about five marketing strategies now these are all marketing strategies that i have implemented in my business throughout the the six years um a writing strategy a mobile strategy social media strategy visual strategy and an email marketing strategy these are all uh really important to being able to not be the best kept secret you want to be able to build it market it sell it really well and they will run um to you so let's talk about these let's kind of break these down and uh, i want to share some information with you about each one of them when you think about uh writing strategy most of the times you're thinking um a, a lot of entrepreneurs think well hey i'm what am i writing i don't need to be writing anything but there is a writing strategy especially if even if you're posting on social media that's writing um but one of the things that have really been um impactful and what i started to do to try and get more visibility to my business and my brand was uh, being able to blog blogging is really really important to um business so when you're blogging you're sharing free valuable information you're really just starting to build a community about what it is that you you offer in your expertise in your niche and you're sharing that information out because you're building your expert your expert um uh, plat platform guest blogging for other um influencers i did that my when i first started blogging uh, no one knew who i was so i was like well someone uh, suggested hey why don't you partner with some um, bloggers that are huge influencers where you can guest blog for them and i thought oh good idea so i started reaching out to uh bloggers to uh, ask about uh, being a guest blog and making sure that the the content of what i was offering really spoke to the audience that they were talking to so i started guest blogging and i i learned to use keywords in in guest blogging so that it would drive people back to uh, to my website drive people back to want to know more uh about me and writing articles writing articles really really started to help me um generate some buzz around my business um, and the and the way I really learned about the the writing articles piece, I had written a book, the the first book that I had written. I wrote a book, and um, the editor had the book, and was what well, my publisher was working on some things in the book, and and the editor that she had wrote for had owned a magazine and so as she was editing my book she told the the publisher she was like i really like the content that she has in this book do you think she would be interested in writing for our magazine that just blew me away i was like really she was like yeah the the um editor my editor who normally goes through and edits all of the the content in the book is really interested in you writing for the magazine and i was like yeah so i wrote for her magazine for about a year and a half i wrote for her magazine regarding what my expertise was and her magazine was her her following was about seven hundred thousand people my following was about 20 25 i mean I, I didn't have a huge following i was new in business and so that was the first aha for me it's like oh okay and then after i started writing for her um then i started to reach out to uh, other uh, magazines that i could do guest write-ups for so i've written for forbes i posted articles in forbes i posted articles in huffington post and all of these um 
organizations have a lot bigger following than I have. And so it was a way for me to start getting my company, my expertise, what I did and uh, how I helped people. It was a way for me to start sharing my intellectual property um, and my views on, uh, on business, on entrepreneurship. I started writing articles about those things and it started, I started to get emails. I started to get um, people connecting with me socially to ask questions about, Hey, I heard you, you, um, uh, read your article regarding this. I would love to talk to you and get more information about your company. So writing, having a writing strategy is a part of marketing. If you're a blogger, uh, if you like to write, then doing a blog right now, blogs are, um, that's, that's just money. Some of the largest bloggers are seven figure bloggers. They started their business sharing information, grew a huge audience. Advertisers started paying them to, to uh, have their ads on their blogs because they attracted so many people and they make tons of money, tons of money, just blogging and writing. So making sure that you have some type of writing strategy, whether it's you sharing your, um, your information with um, other, you know, find the magazines that work for the industry that you're in. Uh, where are the people that you want to help? Where do they hang out? Find out that and then figure out how to connect so that you can start um, writing and sharing information and content. So writing strategy. One of the other um, things is a mobile strategy having a mobile strategy, um, text and SMS uh, marketing is huge. App marketing is huge. We see this um, all the time, people be really being able to um, connect via text. And there's some, some research too, that 95% of Americans now own a mobile device. 95% of Americans have a phone. And 98% of text match messages are open. That's a huge open rate. And so being able to create a mobile strategy for you to market and share your business. I mean, you think about it, we've already witnessed the, the impact of mobile technology and marketing strategy. We, we've already seen how impactful that it can be. And some of the, there are a lot of different, um, software and online platforms that will allow you to create a text mobile strategy. So I want to share a couple of those with you so you can jot them down and then look some of those up later. One of the, the top ones, and, and it's one that I like, is called Slick Text. Uh, S-L-I-C-K-T-E-X-T, -E Slick Text. You can Google Slick Text. And what they do is it helps you to create, um, start to create and build relationships. Um, there's marketing services that they provide for you online. They provide software so you can uh, start to build uh, your list, your community. Um, and then they'll even help you with drafting messages so that you can send those messages out to your customers. Customers. And I remember when this this started, uh, when I was working in, in corporate America, I worked in the retail industry and we did I, uh, eyewear. And so our doctors would schedule appointments. And I had one doctor that was very innovative because no one was doing this until I saw him doing it. And then I thought, OK, we need to have all of our doctors doing this. But he had created a mobile strategy. And so what he did was they not only followed up with the phone call, they followed up with the mobile text. Your appointment is tomorrow at this time. And he shared that his um, his no show rate dropped immensely using the, the text message because instead of the no show, he would either get a, a response that said, hey, I need to reschedule, but they read the text as opposed to calling, listening to the voicemail, forgetting about the voicemail, the text messages really increased um, not only his his uh, result, but he was able to um, once he booked people, it increased his funds because his his um, decline rate went down. His no show rate went down. So he was making money when those uh, uh, patients showed up. So mobile having a mobile strategy is a big part of really being able to grow your business. Anytime that I'm out speaking or um, with with a group, 
that's one of the ways that I connect with the people and uh, is to be able to offer something to them for free. Just text um, this to this number and you'll be emailed the information. And most people always grab their phone and they put the, the text in. And now that information is information that I can continue to nurture and build a relationship with. Because one of the things that's really important is business in this in business period is people do business with people they know, like, and trust. And right out the gate, they have to start building trust. When you're able to start uh, nurturing a relationship with them, you start to build trust. So thinking about a mobile strategy, what is your mobile strategy that's going to help you really elevate and grow your business? Uh, let's talk about the third one a social media strategy. Now we all know how important social media is. It is, um, I remember my my uh, coach telling me before I launched my business, because I was not doing social media at all and didn't want to do social media. And she said, well, you don't have to do social media, but just know you're going, you are going to limit the growth of your company without having a social media strategy. And I just was like, really? I mean, is it that serious? And so I did it reluctantly. I did it and had to kind of navigate learning um, how to actually use social media effectively for my business, because there's a difference in using social media personal in your personal life than a strategy in your uh, for your business. So creating a social media strategy and probably most of you already have social media but have you started using it as a strategy to attract people to you because of your business, to attract people to you because of your, your product or to attract people because of the service that you offer? And in this day and age, everybody wants some type of social proof of who you are. If they just uh, get your name, they're going to audit, they're going to Google, they're going to pull up and see, you know, who you are. So having a social media uh, strategy that is congruent across all social media um, strategies is really, really critical. Anytime, anytime I launch a, a, a product or a course, I really focus on a social media strategy because one of the things that I learned about a social media um, strategy, and this was really beneficial in how I started to post my information out. It was these three questions. Does this stir desire for my products and services? Does this post does, uh, stare something inside of the, the viewer um, for a product and service that I have? If it does not, why am I posting that? And so I had to start to, to look at it and get a little bit more strategic. Does this bill no like and trust? Like I said, that's the, that's how people um, work with uh, a partner with with businesses is with companies they know, like and trust. And so if it's a post that I'm putting out of there, is that helping them to know me a little bit more? Is that helping them to like me more? And is it helping them to trust more about who I am based on what I am posting. And then the third question that's critical when you're posting on social media, does this really help people? Um, now, you know, we can share, um, inform, uh, share information out on social media that, um, and especially when you're thinking about it from a business standpoint, is it helping someone or are you just posting it? Or are you just putting the information out there? Those three questions was critical for me. And it helped me to grow my social media um, following, to grow my, my social media community um, across really all platforms. And so, um, but it was always looking at these three questions to kind of get a gauge of what I am, I am posting out there. And it's helped me to really be able to grow my social media following to, you know, 75,000 followers um, within my social media community, because I am asking these three questions when I am posting regarding who I am, what I do, my business and services. This is really important to me. So these questions are, are really impactful. If you use these questions, I promise you'll see some change in your social media strategy. Um, and then we want to talk about number four, visual strategy. This is this is huge. Um, visual strategy. We know that 
Um, so much is done visually. Now, live streaming has really taken over this, taken over social media by storm. So much so that a lot of the social media platforms all offer some type of live stream, some type of video where you can actually see in the moment um, type uh, videos. And so those live feeds of those uh, videos have become the normal. That's the new normal for us now in communicating our message. Here's a, one of the things that I thought was a really uh, a great statistic. Facebook reported that 100 million hours, listen to that, 100 million hours per day of video. That's how much people watch videos. 100 million hours a day, people are looking at videos. There's people's sites are being watched. So when you engage your audience with live streaming, whether it's live streaming, live events, or you're uh, live streaming and uh, teaching or doing some some training with live streaming, it's it's game ch changer. So there are all kind of of live stream now. We know we have Facebook Live. I recently found out Instagram had uh, a live. I didn't even know they they had a live. YouTube um, is a great way to get your your um, information out there you can post live videos on twitter but really being able to connect because again you're building a business and your live streams get people in contact um with you they're able to to see you do what you do because it's one thing to talk about it it's one thing to write about it but when they actually see you doing it it helps to build some of that um that social proof as well too when you're thinking about a visual strategy you also think about um, the graphics that you post. Uh, graphics that you, you share and that you post should be, um, even your visual strategy of your, your website, it needs to be professionally done by a graphic designer. Um, you can tell some of the homemade um, posts and that diminishes the quality of your, your services. And your services and your products could be amazing. But if you're putting out a visual product that uh, is not desirable, it's going to affect people coming um, to your business or people um, interested in your business. So having a digital strategy is a big part of really being able to bring more people inside your, your business. And then the last one I want to share with you is an email marketing strategy. Email marketing um, has really helped a lot of uh, uh, companies and, and organizations nurture the relationships they have with their consumers. And so making sure that as a part of your email marketing strategy, that your content is engaging, that you're engaging um, your community with the content that they've already said they're interested in knowing more about. Inside of your email marketing strategy, it need, you need to be sharing industry news. If you're if you're in a particular industry, you know what do you know? What are you sharing? Because we we need to be a step ahead of our of the people that we're trying to to bring into our business and and uh, to buy our products and services. So what's going on in your industry that you can share? How can you keep your community uh, informed? That's a big part of of really nurturing your community, linking them to more information. Um, to, to things that's going to help them continue in their journey. Um, and so in, in my email marketing strategy, if there's something that new has come out or if I hear something, anything regarding small business, growth, um, technology for businesses, I share it in my, with my community so that they can, hey, take a look at this link. Uh, just read this in, in Forbes magazine. Uh, what are your thoughts on it? And I'll send that information out just to keep my community informed and send the link out to them. So being able to nurture your community and, and really position yourself as the expert um, within your community helps you to really build and grow your business fast. And don't focus on just sales. Too many people like, oh, I got I, I, I have an email marketing and only thing that they're sending out is I have a, there, here's this product. I have a sale for this. I have an event for this. Come to this, do that. It's always regarding. And when you, when you see that, then um, people start to not open your emails as much because the first thing they're thinking is, 
oh, okay, they got they have a promotion going on. But when you have nurtured them, when you've shared information, you've shared content, you've shared industry news, um, you've brought some value to, to them and what they're doing, they want to open so they can find out, okay, what, what is she sharing today? One of the things that um, a, a researcher and a fact says, 91% of U.S. adults reportedly that they like to receive promotional emails from companies that they've done business with or that they're engaged with. And a lot of times we we get, a. I know we're all inundated with emails, emails from everywhere. If you go and purchase something, you're on an email list. I, I get it. And it can be too much. And a lot of times people think, well, having an email marketing strategy, I really don't want to get on people's nerves. Well, you don't have to get on people's nerves when you are actually providing value um, to them. I do. I'm one of those in that 91% because I like to get the email when there's a sale going on at a company that I frequent quite often that I might not know about um, because then it keeps me on top of, oh, I, I forgot this weekend, you know, they have the big blowout sale. So an email marketing strategy helps to bring that information to me. But you just need to make sure that you are sharing information that is going to impact and help help them. Email um, marketing is just um, evolving and it continues to evolve. There's more and more happening when you, when we think about marketing. Marketing is ever changing and you have to stay on top of what's going on. So if you want to start a business and, and when you're thinking, if I build it, they will come. If I build it, if I market it, and if I sell it really well, they will flock to me. So it's not just one thing. There's more that you have to do. So you have to have a marketing strategy. Now, based on the five areas um, that, that I just share with you, uh, having a writing strategy, having a mobile strategy, having a social media strategy, a visual strategy, and a email marketing strategy. Um, I want to do a quick poll. Let's see if if this um, works. Um, so, uh, William, let's see. Uh, let me know if the the poll will work for um, because the question is. Um, which area do you need to improve in business? Which one of these marketing areas do you need to improve of the five that we just talked about um, that I just share with you? So, William, let's see if we can get the poll up. Uh, yes, Becky, we could not get the poll questions in loaded. Okay. I'm sorry. Oh, no problem. No problem. Um, but it's something for you to think about. Um, now thinking about those areas and thinking about what you're currently doing, what you're currently sharing based on uh, the information you just learned, you should know two areas that you need to focus on. And the, the action step is what are you going to do with those two areas? What are you going to work on? Because what happens a lot of time um, when people learn new information, only two in 10 will take action on it. Only two out of 10 will actually take action on what they just learned. Everyone else will say, that was really good. It was great. Man, there's some things I need to work on. And then they'll go in and go back into their normal mode of what they've been doing. So um, don't, don't be the, the eight, be the two. Take two areas, just two areas and start thinking of based on the business that I have or the business that I want to launch, where do I need to really be able to focus on um, to really be able to take my business to the next level? And now I really want to open it up for question and answers. So if there's any um, questions we want to, um, I think you put those in the chat, right? Um, William, put your questions in uh, in the, the question. I think there's a thing uh, that actually says questions or um, the chat. And we I will try and make sure that we get your your questions answered for you. Uh, yes, and actually, Becky. Uh, we yes, uh, Becky. I do have some questions for you. This is Cheryl. Okay. One one of the questions is, how do you determine how much to allocate budget wise for your marketing plan, particularly for advertising and promotions? Oh, Generally, the thought is question. that you, that you have to spend money to make money. So, how well, do you cut down on those marketing costs? Oh, that's a very good question. And in this. 
um, day and age, there are ways that you can market no cost, low cost, and then you can go, I mean, crazy with your marketing. But when you are, are starting, when I first started, I started sharing it out and um, on all of my social, um, started building my email list, um, start doing all of the, the writing, all that stuff is free. There's, there's no cost to that, to uh, partner and write for um, uh, for other um, bloggers, other magazines. I started being doing all of that at no charge. Then I eventually graduated to where I had I allotted a certain amount of money that I would spend on uh, ads, Facebook ads, Instagram ads, LinkedIn ads, Twitter ads um, is what I was use. I didn't use any ads outside of those those areas. I didn't do. Uh, anything from a, a um, PR or public or mag. I didn't do any of that because that that budget was totally different. But I did use social media ads and I would a lot if I was paying five dollars a day to run something for 30 days, um, because the thing you really want to make uh, to do is everything that you market you need to t uh, test out and then look at the results. Did I get a result from this marketing ad? And if my numbers were low, that ad didn't work. And so then it was like, okay, so now I need to really look at the content or how I, I um, did the ad. And so I would start researching and Googling and trying to uh, figure out what I needed to do. But, but being able to, based on your budget, based on what you know that you have, then you can decide. When I started, I was $100. I'm going to, to put $100 towards um, doing ads and let me see what results that I get from ads if it was going to drive more people to my business. So take what you currently have. You, I mean, start doing the free stuff as much as you can and as frequent as you can. Because let me tell you, one of the biggest things to growth and success is consistency. And too many people start, stop, start, stop. So you confuse your audience. So your audience start and stop like, oh, I hadn't seen her in six months. Oh, there she is. So consistency is key. Being able to, to um, if you're going to say that you're going to post Monday of every week, post Monday of every week, whether you feel like it or not, be consistent because the consistency is what draws people to you. But when you're thinking about using uh, money uh, for for advertising, just be strategic and make sure that you're spending the money where your audience is. Because every social media platform might not be your audience. And so spending money on all those areas and it's not your audience, it doesn't make sense. So be strategic about it. Because I did that. I put money in all those areas and there were some areas it's like, I just really need to come out of that. That's not my audience is not there. And so be strategic and start doing your free stuff and you'll see where your audience is. So when you decide to put money in it, you're putting money towards what you already know you're getting some feedback on. Uh, Becky, next question. What are your tips for beginning to monetize your blog when you're just starting out? Good questions. If you have a blog, um, first of all, you're going to have to start to build up uh, some viewership because the numbers are critical when you're when you're writing and doing blogging. So being able to, to build up your your uh, numbers. One of the other things that you can do as a blog writer is, you know, what are some of the services that you are offering? I have seen people who have blogs make a ton of money because they show themselves as an expert. Then they offer uh, a free course that's going to help people with ABC. And so the course draws money to them as they are continuing to grow their platform or they offer a free ebook uh, or they take the, the ebook and go to a book. And so you're making money through not some of the, the services that you're offering through your, your blog content and as the numbers start to grow then partnering with other blog writers and influencers then you'll start getting the calls from the advertisers who see your numbers and want to pay you to advertise on on your site but you can start making money by offering services whether you put an ebook book together the the great thing about blogging is it's a community that you can have conversation with right away they can they'll give you comments right away and being able to to ask your community you know what is the biggest thing you struggle based on 
what we talked about. Whatever that struggle is, you create the solution to it, they'll they'll buy it all day long. So you can start making money from providing solutions to the problems that your community and your blog is having. Uh, one of our participants has ideas about an app that would make a tremendous impact on her business, but she can't afford to create an app. Any ideas on how to do this in an affordable way? Yes, there are several um, apps. Oh, I'm trying to think of one. Um, it was an app company. I used it when I first started because it was it was a low cost um, to using it. I think it was like $9.99. Uh, nine dollars and ninety nine a month or nineteen ninety nine a month and you send over the content they would build out the app but it was a contract you had to do it for um, a certain amount of time which was a lot cheaper than building a custom app because there there is a lot of money involved in there but Google and research um, apps where you sit where you're, you're, you're looking for apps that are, are pre-done apps that can be customized to your business and your brand if what you're trying to do is very um, niche and no one else has it then that's going to be harder then uh, because you're you they will you will re require you to create and build something that's truly specific to what you're doing but if it's sharing content because apps are able to where you can share content share videos send them notifications let them know things that, that's uh going on within uh what you're doing um, that you can get those at a lower end. But I would start using, if that app is really going to be a game changer for your business, start looking at the revenue that's coming in. How much will you take and sit aside to build that app? Because if you know that app is going to make some money, then my strategy would be um, every for me specifically okay i got this speak engagement i have this uh book signing i'm going to take this much money that's going towards my app that's going toward my towards my app so you be strategic about the funding to get to that app so you can change the world with the app i hope that helps mm -hmm. um what what about podcasts are they an effective version of the visual strategy Oh, yes. Yes. I'm so glad you, you mentioned that, too, because it's something I should have mentioned. Podcast is really on the rise. And right now, for most um, I am hearing a lot, especially in my industry um, with podcasts are being viewed. They're being seen. It's great um, content delivery. And one of my good friends started a podcast about three months ago. And in three months of starting her podcast, she had about 50,000 viewers to her podcast. So her community grew quickly, immensely through uh, the podcast. And because we have our mobile devices with us everywhere we go, it's a quick way to be able to click on hear something, get some information. There are certain podcasts that I follow just because um, I know the content is always going to be great. And so, yes, that is a great visual strategy. And it's uh, it's also a, a great um, social strategy because it connects people when you're listening to podcasts. So yes, if uh, being able to do a, a podcast and build your community, you can build even quicker, really being able to do great podcasts. So yes, thanks for that question. Thanks for bringing that up. That's that's great. And Becky, in all of these strategies that you um, illustrated, what are some of the pitfalls to avoid? Um, or what are some of the um, mistakes you may have ma made and learned from? Oh, my goodness, Cheryl. Girl, I had a whole lot of them. <laughs> a whole <laughs> lot of mistakes I made. But the good thing is every time you make a mistake, it gives you an opportunity to get better. And so um, even with the the blogging, um, I was not consistent in my blogging. When I started to, to blog and I was like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to blog weekly. And I didn't blog weekly. Then I said, okay, I'm just, I'm going to blog monthly. I could do monthly. So I would put it on my schedule. I'm going to blog. I, blogging, 
I am going to do that monthly. And I wasn't consistent um, with it. And so then it really not only confused me, I know my audience was confused because I wasn't consistent, which is why I share with you the way uh, for you to really start to see change is consistency. And I wasn't really um, consistent um, at blogging and at, at writing. One of the things I was at an, at an event last weekend and um Paul um, Carrick Bronson was was uh, one of the uh, speakers. We were speaking at, at the same event. And one of the things that he said um, when he started was he was doing um, this this uh, video. He was doing this blog and he was saying, I, I just got to be consistent. He said, I probably had 10 viewers. Um, 10 people that would be a part of it. And he said, but I kept doing it. I was consistent. I was doing it every week. I was making sure I got it done. And um, he said six months, same thing. He really hadn't grown it, but he was, I, I'm going to be consistent. I said, I would do this. And one day uh, he gets a call from Oprah's team regarding his blog and what he was writing about. Now, he only had less than a handful of, of viewers, but in that handful, Oprah was was one of those. And so one of the people that he, was actually one of his clients worked on her team. He didn't know. And he said they were looking for a relationship expert. And she was she, uh, the, the uh, employee said, well, hey, check this guy out. And she pulled it up and she said, well, let me see when she looked at it and and looked at all of the things he's done the last six months, what he's talked about, what he's blogged about. She was like, OK, I want to bring him in game changer. So consistency is key. Even when you don't see the growth, when you don't see the numbers, I struggled um, with the consistency when I, I started. It was, a, it was a huge opportunity. And that was in all of the areas. I struggled in consistency with my social media um, posts. I struggled with my uh, Facebook uh, lives, any of my, my visual strategy. I was too sporadic. But the minute I got consistent, disciplined, and focused, on those particular areas, it was it was game changer for my business. And so cons that's why I say consistency is really key to really being able to take your business to the next level. And that's in all of these. When I got consistent with my email marketing and ha understood email marketing and a strategy behind email marketing and then made sure that I was communicating with uh, my community, social media, I, I started managing my posts so they would go out on a daily basis and my visual strategy. I did a slew of videos and then I just posted them one at a time because what, what I was struggling with is, okay, every day I got to do this. Okay. Or every week I have to do this. And I was like, you know, I don't, let me just do them all in one day and then post them out the way I want to. So consistency um, is, is key, Cheryl, in all of these areas. Cause I struggled in all of them, um, up and down. It was not, it was not good, but once I got a hold of it and just created my plan on how I can execute it effectively, it really grew my business. Good question. Thank you, Becky. Mm -hmm. Great questions from the audience. Awesome. And thank you guys for, um, for all of your, your questions as you are getting ready to build, grow, or start a business. These are things that you're going to have to implement. And it doesn't matter what stage of business that you are in. One of these strategies um, can help you improve. You might have the strategies already in place, um, but are you doing it at the highest level? What, what are some of the opportunity areas there? Those are things to think about to really be able to help. Um, that way, if you build it, they can come. If you build it, market it and sell it really well. Uh, Becky, I have another question that's come in. Any strategies for marketing when working with local government contracting? Uh, our participant provides community-based services, and the people she serves are not the people who pay for her. Oh, okay. Uh, um, I totally get that, too. The people that you serve are not the people that write a check for you. So your your marketing or and even your networking should be with the people who are going to write the check um, and understanding who that person is. And, and sometimes the marketing uh, might not be 
um, traditional marketing, but when you start to build relationships with those people who write the checks, then your email marketing can really be able to um, to impact them. Or an article that you write and you you send them a link to the article for them to see this is what you do. Those are the the check writers. So being able to be strategic about getting in front of those people is critical. Whoever is the person writing the check that's who your message your marketing has to resonate with not the people getting the services um because a lot of times um let me give you an example um in a school district the the district writes the check you're wanting to do work for the teachers the teachers are excited the teachers want it but they don't write the check and so when you're marketing your information to the teachers they're excited but they're not writing the check so the marketing has to be to the person who writes the check. So if it's the administrators, the marketing has to be how you how how you can improve the results of your school through the development of your teachers. It's a totally different person that you're you're talking to as opposed to talking about how this is going to to just help the teacher. The person that's purchasing want to know how it's going to help the district. And so your marketing has to be really focused on the person that's going to write the check to, uh, for, to do business with you. That's who your marketing should be speaking to. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions from our, our webinar participants? I'm trying to uh, sign you uh, a couple more questions. Uh, people should realize that they can also uh, raise their hand on the uh, side of your control panel at the very bottom of the, uh, under the orange arrow is a place for you to raise your hand. If you'd like to raise your hand, we would try to uh, recognize you so that you could ask your question directly of Cheryl. But uh, I am trying to assign uh, questions to you, Cheryl, that, uh, that uh, Becky and the audience would find uh, interesting to uh, hear a little bit more about. We have, uh, oh, let me just uh, go back to assigning to you. Okay. While we're waiting um, for um, other questions from the audience, uh, Becky, um, what um, in terms of of a small business that has employed all of these strategies, um, they've been consistent. Um, maybe they've reached that um, since six months period of time, but they're still feeling challenged as to being seen and 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 people realizing that they're there. Uh, what are maybe some other, one or two other things they might do to kickstart that? If they don't have the opportunity to have someone that knows Oprah sees it. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> I, I totally understand. We all want that Oprah uh, a moment that'll help accelerate our business um, to, the, to a whole nother level. But some of the things that you can do immediately is start collaborating, start building relationships and start collaborating and partnering with other businesses. Because one of the things that can really help your business grow and exalt um, to a whole nother level is being able to partner with, with other businesses. One of the things in my first year of business that really helped to take my business to a whole nother level was to partner with an organization and um, start doing small business coaching for the organization. And I did the the, the coaching free, absolutely free, uh, didn't charge. I just knew I needed to be in that room of 600 women. Um, that was my ideal client. I needed to be a, a part of that um, that. Uh, organization. And so I start partnering with other organizations to help um, 
really helped to catapult me and put me in front of my target audience because a lot of what I have found, what entrepreneurs do, and we've all made this mistake, so don't feel bad if you have. What we do is we will try and go and get our first client, our first customer, our first client, our first customer, and don't think about where is my client hanging out in a large space. So instead of getting a client, how can I get an organization that has all of my clients that cuts my my work down from getting one uh, one customer at a time and going into a place with like that um, that uh, conference and retreat that I um, coached and did training for it was 600 people that was my target audience and so that partnership exposed me really quick really fast to a huge group of people. So when you're thinking about growing, who can you serve? Uh, where can you go spend your gift times and uh, uh, talent being able to serve someone else that puts you in the presence of uh, the people that you really want? That has been a huge best practice um, for me. Anytime I can partner with um, companies and organization, it has really helped me to catapult my business. Mm -hmm. Okay, one last question. It's a follow-up on the uh, uh, blog creation. We have a list, a participant who uh, creates blog content about black history and culture, but she's not currently selling anything, just sharing her knowledge, and she's struggling to figure out how to create something um, from the work that she's providing that she can monetize. So there's a couple of questions that um, I would would want to know about that. So you're you're communicating about Black history. So what's your what's the goal of your business? What what do you want to do with that? Are you are you communicating that because you want to um, be in a political space? Are you communicating that because you want to be able to make change in the communicate? Uh, uh, or are you communicating uh, that information as an expertise because you want to be a speaker on that? What's your what is the end goal for um, for that? Because you can continue to share the information and as your blog grows, then advertisers uh, come to you. But if you're looking to make money before then, then there's something you have to be able to provide that uh, helps the uh, the your your audience. If it's not going to help the audience, no one no one's going to buy something just because I attend this blog. So thinking of your end goal, why are you doing what you're doing? Why are you, you're blogging for what? When I was writing, I was writing to draw people to my business to learn more about my services and to eventually want to do business with me. That was my reason. I wanted to be able to create uh, the and build my expertise in the area for people to see how often I am writing about this particular topic so that it would open up speaking engagements um, for me because someone read it and said, hey, we're doing a conference on what specifically is your end goal for your blog on um, on uh, African-American um, history? There has to be an end game. Without it, it it's a uh, you'll kind of spin your will. So that's something that, that you really have to think about. That'll help you come up with what your product is. Well, thank you, Chief Bosspreneur. You have certainly <laughs> illustrated um, uh, that you are an expert in this field. Thank you so much. Um, I am now gonna turn it over to Janice to close out for us. Thank you, Cheryl. There are a, a number of um, participants who would like to know how they can get in contact with Becky, um, uh, whether she can share an email address or something. Uh, they have yes. interest in your coaching or getting additional advice from you. Thank you so much, uh, William. Um, you can find me on anything social media at Bosspreneur. So if you pull up Bosspreneur, I'm the only one that should come up. If someone else comes up, let me know because that is tra a registered trademark. Um, so at Bosspreneur on all my social sites, Facebook, LinkedIn, LinkedIn, um, at my personal page is my name, Becky A. Davis. And at LinkedIn, it's Becky A. Davis. But Twitter, Instagram, um, even my Facebook um, group 
is all Bosspreneur. My Facebook business page is under Bosspreneur as well. Um, you can email me at Becky Davis. My name and my company name is MVP work work.com that's becky davis at mvp work.com but i would love to connect with you um socially uh as you are go being millennial entrepreneurs to really get your business to the next level thank you we william a, yes we also have one uh raised hand if we have time to sure. try and take this question from uh miss giddens mm -hmm. miss giddens you you are self-muted you need to unmute yourself by using the telephone handset on the right hand side of your control panel can you unmute yourself so that you can ask your question we lost Ms. okay i have another question um uh, becky and william um everyone on social media looks flawless you look great today. Becky, um, do you recommend people do makeup, hair before posting live streaming on social media? You know what? I recommend you being uh, authentically you. When I first started, I, that's what I did. I always made sure that, okay, let me get up and get myself together and put my makeup on, get my hair done, and I would do it. And remember, I told you I was very inconsistent. Well, guess why I was inconsistent? Some days I didn't feel like getting up, putting on makeup. I didn't. And I thought that's how I had to be. What I have learned since then um, is that showing up authentically me um, actually works better. So the days that I get up and have a thought for a live and I come on and I share it, no makeup, I have a baseball cap on, whatever the issue is, people, it helped to build no like and trust because I'm not always made up. I actually did a series of videos that I called my before. And I, I didn't wear makeup and I didn't do my hair. I mean, it didn't look crazy, but I didn't actually, you know, style my hair. And I called it my before because I wanted people to understand what you are seeing right now. You think is is uh, every uh, is. Oh, my God, this is great. I need you to know what my before looked like. Not just my before before I put the makeup on, but the struggles that I had in business, the, the disappointments that I had, the areas where I just was horrible or this really didn't go well or I failed. I took a risk and the risk did not pay off. I lost money. And I really wanted people to understand that that all encompasses entrepreneurship, not just everything is is great. And so I would say if you're if you're doing video, just show up authentically. If you have on makeup that day, great. But if you don't feel like putting makeup on, then still show up that way because people need to um, see us just really in our natural state because life is not perfect. And the social media can can create um, some fake people out there. So just being true and authentic to yourself is really what's important. Good question. Uh, Becky, we have someone who's asked. Oh, go ahead. This is Claire. I was about to say, I have a, a question here. I'm a professional speaker and trainer for public speaking. Who do I target in social media, blogging, and, and to get booking? How do, how do I do that? So you're a speaker for, um, what, what do you speak on? This is a question from someone in our audience. So okay. She has yeah, she she left this question behind, so I don't know what her topic is. Okay, um, so then she's I'll a professional up. speaker and trainer for public speaking. I think she 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 okay. trains people to do public speaking. Okay, so she trains people to do public speaking. So you, you you as business owner, you decide who you want to 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 um, really focus on. Because what we do, we cast our net wide, and we say anybody that wants to speak, I'll teach you how to speak. Um, and so the net is so wide. But when you say, hey, I have a training class on public speaking for authors and coaches or for uh, have a, a, a public speaking class for um, tech people who really sh uh, struggle in, in that area to help you um, take your, your presentation to the next level. So when you're posting it out on social media, if you niche it, those people will see it and they'll respond. But when it's when it's a wide, broad um, large net, 
then you, sometimes you don't get as much as you think you're, you're getting in because the net is so large. But if you're saying, hey, I do public speaking training for accountants, um, I do public speaking training for youth, um, I do public speaking uh, training for you decide who you want to niche it to. Believe me, once you niche it and it builds and, and it grows, then you can open it up to, you know, more. But what we what we do is we just really focused on trying to get to everybody. And that is not the smartest thing to do. We think we don't want to miss anybody that might pay us some money. So I, I can help everybody with this but there's more money. I think there's a quote that says there's riches in niches and there are, you make more money when you target and you speak to that audience. Cause they'll always hear you. They'll always hear you. Uh, Becky, we have a, a participant who wants to know what are the two marketing strategies that have most helped you and most been beneficial to you monetarily and rewardingly. I would say my social media and my email marketing are the top two. My email marketing strategy, the minute I automated um, my email marketing strategy and automated all the, the, the inner workings behind that, that was really game changer. And my social media strategy, when I asked those quick three questions to myself, because I was posting to be posting because I knew I was supposed to post but I wasn't strategic in my, my posting. But when I got intentional, deliberate and focused about what I post, asking those three questions, is this going to draw more people to me? It started to really, really build my Facebook group um, in a two year time frame grew from like 500 uh, to 10,000. And it was because I was intentional about what I posted, the content that I put out um, for the community that I was focused on serving. So my email marketing strategy and my social media strategy has been the two biggest um, business drivers for my because I get business from Twitter. I get business from LinkedIn. I get business from Instagram and Facebook. Facebook uh, is I get more business from Facebook than than any of the others. Excellent. Ex excellent questions. Clara, do you have any other questions? No, I don't. <clears throat> we may be, um, you know, at the end of, unless, uh, unless William is seeing some, we may be at the end of this session. It has been absolutely, uh, Becky, as always. Um, Thank you. You always bring such good information to the group. I don't know whether uh, Janice is still on the line. Janice, are you here? Well, if not, I'm going to close out on behalf of the National Council of Negro Women. Um, we are here every uh, fourth Friday um, with topics of interest, and we're also here every fourth Thursday evening um, with the uh, business entrepreneurs uh, session. This one is geared toward millennial entrepreneurs, and our other is the Thursday evening is, is just a broader audience. Here's Janice. Janice, uh, I, had, I had you on mute. You were doing a great job. Keep it up. <laughs> <laughs> I've learned from the best, Janice. Well, I did have one other question for Becky. She said something that's very important. She said she automated her social media. And I wanted to ask her how. So how did you um, there are several platforms where you can automate your social media. So Hootsuite is a, or a company. Uh, Edgar is a company. And what they do is um, I could post all of my social media for the month and schedule out every day what time I want to post it. I can post it inside of one of those platforms and they'll automatically send it out for me. Because uh, where I was getting caught up is, OK, now I got to go post every day. That was, it was just too much. But there, there are software platforms where you can put in all of the posts that you want to post for the week, for the day, for the um, for the month, for the year. If you want to, you can go in and uh, pre-post them in there and it's automatically triggered to go out at the date and time that you ask for for LinkedIn, for Facebook, your Facebook page, Facebook group, Facebook um a uh, personal page for Instagram, for Twitter, um, for LinkedIn, it, all of them, you can automate them where they go out automatically. 
And obviously you found that it was cost effective to do it that way, that it didn't cost more than the benefit. Yes, because I was spending a lot of time uh, doing the the post and, and stroke. So I would just take a day and I'd write all of my posts for 30 days for the month and create all of the flyers that I was going to put out. I would go inside of that software, post each one of them, and then I'd be done. I, I don't have to do it again to the next month. And then I would get it. Now I have a social media manager um, that handles all that for me. I sent her over the information and she handles um, everything. But uh, initially it was it was me. But it, it is more cost effective. So you can really work in your gift and not doing some of those tasks that can bog us down. Well, thank you for that. I'm sure that there are other entrepreneurs who want to know how to, because it can be a lot. I mean, they say you need to tweet 20 times a day. Well, right. who can tweet 20 <laughs> times a day? Exactly. exactly. That's why if you just pre-plan it, and put it out there and you can pre-plan it for um, a tweet to go out at nine, a tweet to go out at 12, a tweet to go out. And it, it's automatically set in there because some social media platforms you have to post more on than others. And once you just kind of know what the formula is, then you just set it up to pre-do that stuff on its own. Did you discover those formulas on your own or do those programs and companies give you data to help you figure out is it better to post in the morning at noon at night uh, do they also help you figure out what's the what's the best time and ways to post yes i did a couple of different things those platforms will share some information but i actually got with a social media expert and they kind of guided me through these are the best times to to um post on on twitter because twitter posting is different than facebook posting is different than instagram posting and so once i got with them i was like oh my god i've been doing all of this this wrong but um they helped me to better understand um how to post what to post times of the day uh to post and i learned the same thing with the email marketing there are certain times of the day that emails are more uh, opt to be open than others and so when i schedule my email post i schedule them at the highest open rate times and once you start doing it inside of those software um programs all of your analytics are in there so you can go and click and it'll show you when you're getting more posts when you're getting more opens more clicks more and then now you have that data to say okay i have more people that are looking at my instagram at eight o'clock on thursdays so on eight o'clock on thursdays then i might need to post three times at eight o'clock on thursdays what I noticed from listening to you, Becky, is that you've invested a lot in your marketing plan. Experts for this, experts for social media. And talk a little bit about how important it is to put some of your profit back into building the company that you really want to have. Yes, we cannot do it by ourselves. And when we start a business as a solopreneur, if it's just you, you're trying to do everything yourself. But I had a coach to um, create this chart for me and it, it was really a, a aha moment. And it was a four graph chart. And in one area, he had $1, he had $10 in the top corner, he had $100 and he had $1,000. And he said, anything that's in the $1, $10, $100, you should not be doing. The stuff that's in the $1,000 that's going to bring money, you need to focus your time there. So who can you get to help you with those $1, $10? And, and I was like, he said, if it's $10, if that's all, then you need to pay somebody that $10. If it's $100, you need to pay somebody that $100. And I was like, okay, because who tweet is $100? And I was doing that. And so I was like, OK, so I really started to focus on what areas of my business that, first of all, I, I didn't like doing, but I had to do. And that's where I started to focus on people who were experts in that level, in that area. And let me pay them out, because what what happens is you'll start to convince yourself, oh, I can't afford that. I can't afford that because I right. said the same thing. I can't afford to get this expert. And I and I was like, you know what, Becky, try it for 60 days. And if you can't afford it, you will know. But what I found out is in those 60 days, because I wasn't working on that and it was still building my business, I was working on the thousand dollar. I was like, I can't afford it. And so I, I always kept 
um, was able to keep a team of people that works on building the brand together. You, you have to put money back in your business. And as long as you're trying to do everything, you're going to hit a, a salary cap. You're going to hit a, a, a cap where you can't move beyond because you cannot do it all yourself. I mean, you have to get some help. But the biggest thing was those $1 activities, those $10 and those $100 activities, I you should not be doing. Um, as you're building and growing your business, then you look for someone who can take on those activities while you focus on the $1,000 and $10,000 activities. That is great advice. And I would never have thought of it in 100 years. I'm going to practice that. That, that sounds like good advice for a certain nonprofit organization that I know too. <laughs> yes, take it off your plate. That's a waste of your time. Somebody else needs to be doing it. All right. Well, do we have other questions? Um, are, are we ready to close out now? Maybe so. Let me thank all of you again on behalf of National Council of Negro Women. Ingrid Saunders Jones is our illustrious chair. Our program director is Paulette Norvell Lewis, who's based in Atlanta, has a lot of program experience. We're so grateful that you would choose to join us in just about 10 days to two weeks. If you didn't see all the program or you'd like to review it, there will be video as well as PowerPoint uploads so that you can visit this material again. And we invite you to come to our national convention and see the pitch competition. If you've been to at least four of these webinars and you're a member of NCNW, you're eligible to compete for $5,000 in prize money. We think that'll be an incentive to help somebody maybe invest in their social media strategy. We appreciate what you're doing for us, and we hope that you will consider joining NCNW. You can find us on all the social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Just look for NCNWHQ. NCNWHQ stands for headquarters. Claire, we're always delighted and thankful for what you and William do for us. And Cheryl, I know how busy you are. Thanks for coming out today to be our moderator. And thanks to the company for sponsoring Millennial Entrepreneurs. Go out and make it a good day, folks. Bye.